but I know you'll make up the time. Yes, sir. Ed, Ed. Anyway, <laughs> all right. <laughs> First up is the police department, Ed. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, council members, viewers, guests. Uh, my name is Ed Van Bailey. I'm the deputy chief of the Renton Police Department, and I'll be covering the police department budget. Budget book page is 3-95, and then our uh, handout slide number is number 43. <coughs> All right. Our first slide is our uh, organizational chart representing 148 full-time employees. There's no significant changes for 2015 other than our staff services position, which is the uh, second box left of the police chief down. It was a commander position. It was a commissioned officer position. We're changing that to a non-commissioned officer, or excuse me, a non-commissioned officer, which is a manager position. And that was for the uh, long-term manager recruitment process and kind of a benefit of somebody that has an expertise in public records, uh, records management, and things like that. Next slide, our uh, police department vision, mission. Uh, these were both created this last year in a new effort to uh, combine resources and, and knowledge. We had, had some committees and some groups that came forward and uh, re reworded our vision and mission. Our vision, the regional leader in delivering progressive law enforcement services. Um, this was to set a goal of being a regional leader. Uh, we kind of match this goal now, and it's just to kind of jump on that. Um, the, the words regional leader were new. Services, uh, providing law enforcement services is all encompassing. Before, it's just law enforcement related police work. We want to include records. Uh, animal control, everybody that's involved in the law enforcement community in Renton. So that's why we provided the word uh, services. Progressive, it's just forward looking. We're anticipating the problems and we wanted to make sure everybody looks at forward looking, seeing problems that might come up, uh, whether it's budget, personnel, anything like that. The mission, working together to provide professional and unbiased law enforcement services to our community. Uh, the new words there, mission is together. Again, that's all encompassing. It's including community. It's including law enforcement officers. It's non-commissioned officers. It's everybody. Uh, community, providing them law enforcement uh, services. We want to minimize bad experiences. And the community, as you'll see later on in the presentation, has become more of a focus for us and, and dealing uh, or working with them, finding out ways to work with them instead of being so responsive, being progressive. <coughs> uh, we also shared with how we uh, use vision and mission. And that's for officers to basically screen their decision making to make sure it's supporting the vision and mission. The decision I'm about to make, does that fit the vision and mission of working with the community and providing great law enforcement services? Our department goals, maximize department effectiveness, targeting the reduction of crime. And this is through crime analysis, community programs, patrol enforcement. We want to put the right tool on the right problem. And that's just really identifying these problems through our crime analysis, coming up with a group effort, and putting all the resources we can to kind of resolve these issues. We want to create a, you know, a security and comfort for the citizens. Provide outstanding service to our community. This, we really just had to provide, or excuse me, um, we had to define outstanding. And that's professional, timely, and long-term solutions. People want solutions, they want them quickly, and they want them to last for quite a while. Create a rewarding, rewarding rewarding work environment through workforce development, embracing diversity, and imparting our experience and tradition of excellence. Create a rewarding work environment really came down to career management, increasing opportunities through on-the-job training, classroom training, and job sharing. Being in the same position for a while, we found better officers with more experience if we allowed them to move throughout the department job share, learn detective work, patrol work, whatever these opportunities present in themselves, keeps things fresh and you have a, a more satisfied employee. Uh, provide diversity training and increase recruiting efforts. We recently just started uh, pushing out our recruiting efforts um, to Joint Base lewis McCord, some of these other areas. A recruiting team was assembled and we pushed them out there to make sure that we're on the front forefront of recruiting efforts. Um, Imparting our experience and tradition of excellence. Maintain Rent Police Department's reputation as a law enforcement leader. We provide statewide training from our own resources. We like to practice low cost, no cost training. We have so much talent in the police department, whether it's defensive tactics, firearms, all these things that we, we currently use. We use our own employees because they're very good at it. They have received training throughout the years 
and we don't only use that in the police department. Just recently, we provided leadership training at a quarterly management meeting for the city of Renton for all the managers. Uh, another, we, we train motorcycle, we train SWAT, we train all sorts of the, these other specialty positions throughout the state, where state recognizes as having the state leadership training. Department performance measures. As far as progressive thinking, this is one of those examples. Uh, this is our time results. Uh, this is a measure as far as our average response time, priority one call being the most serious, priority four not as serious. Uh, if you look at the times from 2012, the majority of those went down in 2013. This was a result of changing our staffing levels at certain times. We recognized that calls for service were higher at certain times during the day, so we put more officers on the street during that time of day. We adjusted their schedules. And this happened about halfway through the year, and you'll see that the results were a, a reduce in the calls for service time. Some statistical information. This is our NIBRS report, our National Incident-Based Reporting System. This is a national requirement. It's submitted by our records department, and it'll show that Renton, the crime rate per 1,000 is the lowest in the area. Kent during that year did not, so, did not report any kind of information. But we included Seattle, while not comparable as far as size. Uh, we'd just like to highlight the fact that our, our crime rate per 1,000 is the lowest in the region. Kent didn't want to show those shootings. Okay. Our budget highlights, this is good news. We recently uh, agreed to a cost sharing with the Rent School District. This provides 50% of the salaries for our SROs and the plan is to have three SROs. We currently have one SRO located in uh, Renton High School, SRO being the school resource officer. This is a program that we went without for uh, a year or two. And what we supplemented that with was adopt a school where we had officers that went to schools in their district. So just talking with the school district in the last week, uh, we've agreed to uh, split the cost 50%. So we will, within the next two years, have two additional full-time employees, a SRO that goes to Lindbergh High School and a school resource officer that goes to Hazen High School. And these positions will be phased over 2015-2016. More budget highlights. Our Valley Communications, you'll see a significant increase in 2015 and 2016. So looking at the reasons for that, they, they developed a new CAD system. We're running a new computer automated dispatch system. And the cost to cool these units increased. They had to put more coolers in there to cool, uh, cool down the servers. Um, employee health care, the health coverage for employees at Valleycom. And just the programming and, and training that required for the new CAD system. Mercer Island Harbor Patrol, it's an increase of almost $24,000 in 2015 and 2016. In total, that comes to about $63,000 that we pay, which is, it's a very much needed public safety issue. Mercer Island does more than just patrol our waters, which contain Ivers, um, Kid Valley, but also one of the busiest boat launches on Lake Washington. Uh, they check our buoys, they make sure that they're clean and that they stay in place. So it's, it's a much needed at a, at a good cost public safety issue. Basic Law Enforcement Academy, we were required to pay 25% of the academy fee, which is roughly $3,000 plus ammunition. But the Basic Law Enforcement Academy generally average four officers per year. So $12,000 in 2015 and 2016 would represent four officers each year, four candidates. The Alive and Free program. This is a South County initiative uh, that have funds matched by Pete Carroll's A Better Seattle. The agencies that are uh, assisting with this are, are part of this program, Renton, Kent, Tuckwilla, and Auburn. We've provided $30,000, which again is matched by Pete Carroll's organization. And this allows for uh, gang education. This puts mentors and counselors on the street into those hardest impacted areas where gang violence is, is prevalent and provides them an outreach, it provides them a counselor, a mentor to help them through that process and it's proven quite effective. So we provide $30,000 and again, P. Carroll's group, they, they match the $30,000. Photo enhancements, you can see the uh, revenue 
based on uh, coming from the uh, photo enhancements they will cover them themselves the uh, the cost of the photo enhancements <coughs> that's two hundred ninety four thousand and twenty fifteen and twenty sixteen uh, going back to the photo enhancement what this actually does for the cost is it reduces the, the, the accidents that we have in those locations it prevents some of the uh, near misses and things like that it provides an, an element of safety that people can see those flashing lights are, are quite attractive and, and they know where they're at so that slows them down uh, again the commander to manager position this is staffing change only there's no additional cost just converting from a commission officer to a non-commission officer equipment request sixty thousand dollars for the 2015 2016 ammunition <coughs> this is kind of a nationwide problem nationwide the increase uh, cost of ammunition is going up all all around 33,000 2015 and 2016 for ballistic vest replacements our vests are warranted for five years so e every five years we have to replace these so we'll do half 2015 and half in 2016 the 2015 2016 computer forensics is a much needing training and equipment the training itself is very very expensive um, but the, the the benefit for us there's so much internet crime whether it's uh, pornography or, or back page use uh, prostitution sex crimes things like that uh, it's very important for us to capture phones computers and things like that so the training is very very important um, so that's why that request was made the third canine officer this initial cost, the startup, $90,000 in 2015, for, that's for the vehicle equipment training of the canine and the purchase of the canine. Um, it's not a new officer. It's an officer that will currently be there. The reason for the decision was there's so many requests for service for a canine officer during the day shift. Uh, agencies all around are requesting canines, and what we'll typically do if there's not one on is they call and request one from home. They get a phone call at home and say, hey, can you come in? That's Tuckwill Auburn, Renton. Um, so the third canine officer is becoming um, quite useful as far as try burglaries happen during the daytime. So that's one of those uses that we would have. The additional 22,000 in 2016. This is uh, operational costs that include meals, you know, dog care, food, uh, medical, overtime, training. They have to stay trained. It's a high liability case, so they have to maintain lots of training, lots of training hours, and logged. Finally, sustainability, succession planning. The police department's <coughs> going to go through a, a, a significant retirement of leadership within the next year. So as I like to say in the department, there's, a, there's some, some, the ground is shaking, and uh, we want to make sure all our pieces are in the right place when it stops. So we have some retirements. We have some leadership training that's going on to prepare those people that we're going to fill those shoes. Uh, we provided uh, two tests, sergeant testing and commander testing in the last year that provided really good lists that we can draw from, and that was the first start, first step. Uh, the training and leadership, we are providing training to all formal and informal leaders within the police department. It's a program called LPO, Leadership and Police Organization. It's based on MIT leadership training uh, study. It's based on West Point curriculum. And we really wanted everybody to basically speak the same language, hold people accountable, and, and realize you know, what comes first. Legal update, we want to be at the forefront of knowing what the laws are, how they change, and maintain you know, our edge as far as legal update. Inclusion, diversity, it's about taking down the barriers, making sure that our policies and practices are currently in place, the ones that are currently in place are effective. Uh, community needs, this is a big focus now. Uh, we created a non-emergency number. A lot of people were hesitant to call 911 because they thought, well, my problem is not an emergency. So we created this non-emergency number so they can call and still get a police response. Block watch, we have ongoing block watches that people, you know, they're aware of it, but we need to get more information out there. We have volunteers, lots of volunteers that spend countless hours to go out, check residences, that we go to picnics, we go just kind of all over the place to make sure that people are taken care of or feel that the error safety. Technology connection kind of fits with all of these things. We have a Facebook page and we have a Twitter page. These are pretty brand new to Renton, but we're really trying to push a lot of information out there or give people resources and direct them to the right answer. And that's the, the big focus with the technology. Community focus, 
this is this this is the difference between old police work and new police work we need to stand shoulder to shoulder with the community to make sure that we're addressing their needs it's not just about ticketing or anything like that it's really about understanding what their problems are and all those things inclusion legal update and leadership are part of that solution we have new programs like nuisance abatement when you have those problem residences that can can really hurt a neighborhood that make life uncomfortable we team up with the prosecutor's office with code enforcement and our own specialized units to try and address these problems as soon as possible we went through two i believe two or three cases in the last year and we learned a lot from that and so we're pretty excited we have some new things coming up so as people recognize a problem house business something like that we have tools in place in practice that we can go forward with and take care of some of those problems and it just really makes a neighborhood a whole lot better it, it makes them feel safer uh, training to go with the community focus we the, the chief and I actually sat down in a, a community meeting that dealt with uh, Muslim faiths uh, six um, uh, Hispanic faiths and really try to connect with them to find out what their needs are and really it comes down to what their perception of the police department is from their from their countries it could be a lot different than what we're used to and it's really important for us to kind of understand that so to sit in those exercises that are put on by the FBI or King County are really beneficial and we can train the trainer bring that information back and push it out to the department so that everybody kind of sees what the what the focus is um, we want to make ourselves more transparent and available to the community more responsive as they make phone calls we need to streamline the process to getting that information to the right person and giving them an answer as soon as possible so that's a, a big part of our, our success comes from the community and being able to communicate with them and now any questions please. great job All right. thank you thanks sir uh, I think at a later date we'll have you come up and spend a lot more time with us in a in a session on on the training that you're doing but uh, great presentation right, sir. thank you very much thank you and where is the chief uh, he doesn't tell me things like that sir. I think he's dodging a hurricane about now or something. put me in a tight spot there <laughs> Nancy how are you tonight I'm doing well I'm doing well thank you oh let me get my okay yeah we're a small department I didn't have anybody to bring with me to <laughs> do the, uh, the PowerPoint so I was gonna have to do it on my own so, well Good evening, um, Council President Persons, uh, Council Members, and I want to say for the record, my name is Nancy Carlson, and I'm the Administrator for Human Resources and Risk Management, or as we often refer to it, HRRM. Um, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to come here tonight and to speak with you about our 2015 and 16 budget. We start our, uh, our budget page is uh, section 3-85, and then the presentation that I will be here starts on slide 60. So you can look to those two things. Uh-oh. Okay. Well, I, I've gotten a little out of order here, but let me start by saying that um, on our organizational chart, as with all of the departments, it's a functional organizational chart. And it shows our various responsibilities. Um, as with many other departments in the city, HRRM is responsible <coughs> for a wide variety of programs. They range anywhere from recruitment and selection of employees to ensuring the city's financial assets and creating a safe environment both for employees and for the general public. The department is divided into, uh, into three divisions. One we call human resources, another we call benefits, and the final one is risk, risk management. Each division has its own budget. Um, and for each one of our divisions, we have developed a mission statement back there we have developed a mission statement that is specific to the function of that division however however as a department as a whole we do operate under the one mission statement and I think that can be summed up by saying that um, 
HRRM's mission is to create a work environment that is positive and productive and allows all employees to serve the needs of our residents. That's why we're there. We're there to help employees. Uh, we're there to help the organization with, uh, with its risk needs and so that, other, so that all of the employees can help the residents of the city. As most of you know, um, I've been here uh, just about seven years now. And in that time, I have never had the opportunity to come before you and ask for more, so to speak. <laughs> Tonight, I have that opportunity. Because um, this year, I am requesting an increase in our staffing in HRRM by two positions. One is an HR analyst uh, at an intermediate level, and the other one is a senior analyst. But before I get to the detail, let me just, before I get to the detail, I would like to offer a little bit of background. I promise I won't take long. <laughs> Currently, the department has nine positions. There are two employees are dedicated to the risk, fun risk, risk functions, which include, you know, claims and liabilities, workers' compensation, workplace health and safety, safety inspection, collection on, on uh, damage done to city property by third parties. We do contract review so that we are sure that uh, people who are, we are contracting with and are working for us, uh, if something goes wrong, they have the insurance to, to cover it. The HR function includes classification and compensation, unemployment, labor negotiations, grievance processing, mediations, arbitrations, investigations and complaints, training and employee development, coaching, and so on. And on the benefit side, we oversee the medical, dental, and vision plan, the wellness, administration of the Family and Medical Leave Act, and Americans with Disabilities, which sometimes can include medical separations when individuals can no longer do their jobs, do the essential functions of their jobs, and we can't find a way to accommodate them in, in the organization. We also deal with retiree benefit counseling, um, short and long-term disability insurance, deferred compensation. When we take into consideration that we have over 650 regular employees and we hire more than 250 seasonal employees every year, I have to say that's a lot of work for nine employees. But I am very proud to say that we have dedicated people in HRRM and who are very, very passionate about the work that they do. When I arrived in April of 2008, the department was staffed by 12 individuals. By 2010, we were down to nine. We were required to lay off one HR analyst, one secretary that functioned as an HR assistant, and our safety officer retired, so that position went unfilled. Uh, but I'll admit, as we reduced the staff, the work also was scaling back because, for well, primarily because we were scaling back as an organization. But for example, recruitments um, were way down because we had no jobs to fill. Uh, we were not hiring. And since we would not be doing a lot of hiring, we were not doing a lot of outreach to the community because there were no jobs available. We also lost the majority of our advertising budget. Um, and it was basically cut down to $2,500 from about $12,500. So there was no more outreach in, in different publications and so on. What we did was that the only thing we could do was find places that were free to advertise, and then we used Craigslist, which was $25 per posting. So it was, it was economical for us. But one of the greatest losses that occurred during that time was the fact that we had to cut our training budget, and that was cut back to $10,000. Now, half of this money was used to, um, uh, to support a, a program that keeps people's skills in Excel, in Word, in PowerPoint, and in Access to keep their skills up to date or to advance their skills. And so more than half of that was used to that, was used for those purposes. Um, but we were not offering our employees any employee development, any leadership development, any supervisory development. 
And we really began to see the effects on the employees. In 2011, 2012, and part of 2013, we had morale problems in a number of the various areas and in different departments. Um, so we decided, so you put some money back into the budget in 2012, and we were once again able to start rebuilding that program, but it wasn't until you know, 13 and 14 that we really began to see a difference. Now, even though we cut back and uh, we were a little shorthanded, they're 13 and 14. Um, I should have had someone up here to do this. <laughs> uh, we still had many accomplishments. Um, we, uh, we totally reworked our 457 in, in 13 and 14, our deferred compensation pro program, providing better investment options and less cost to employees. We worked with the unions who helped us to reduce the cost of our medical plan for a period of two years, which really helped us through those rough times. We completed more than 150 recruitments and promotions, although most of those, I will admit, have come in uh, 2014. Um, we renegotiated all of our collective bargaining re uh, agreements. We rec uh, replaced our workers' comp third-party administrator, which this was a move that was highly appreciated by our employees since we were having some difficulties. And we collected, in risk, we collected over $150,000 uh, from individuals that had damaged city property. That's one of Colleen Shannon's favorite tasks. She gets them to pay. So, um, and we also did start to rebuild a training program um, at the core, which is our performance management and customer service training for all employees. But we have many more initiatives that we would like to accomplish in 15 and 16 and onward. As Ed just mentioned, and as I know only too well, he's not in this, this group yet, we are an aging workforce. There is no doubt about that. Therefore, to ensure leadership for years to come, we must provide our employees with the tools to lead. Um, and this comes through training. We have a good start with coaching and supervisory essentials class, and we'll continue that effort in the next biennium. But we also want to develop and implement a pathways program to assist our non-managers to fill those management roles in the future. We want to build partnerships with the various educational institutions in the city, such as the Renton School District, the RTC, City University, and work with these, uh, work with these organizations to promote careers in the public sector. Years ago, people were attracted to the public sector because there was security in public sector jobs. Um, you know, there was security, that there were no layoffs, which is not, uh, not anymore. The benefits were good, and um, your retirement was secure. People don't look at the public sector the way they did 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, and also, the face of our community has changed. Others who have come here from different countries don't always consider public sector to be an honorable career. That's because they may come from countries and communities where government is corrupt. And they think that the people who are in government are corrupt as well. We need leaders for the future. And it's our job as a community to help teach the children who are in our schools and sometimes the parents of those individuals just how rewarding a, a career in public sector can be. That's why we want to partner with the schools. We think that's the best place to start. And these efforts will also help us in to achieve our goals as an inclusive community. But also tantamount to our ability to keep our costs low is um, to work with the unions because we, we need to totally revamp the way we administer our health plan. While the Health Care Reform Act has provided hundreds of thousands of individuals in the country with health care, 
It also has one element that unfortunately penalizes employers um, that are already providing a high quality uh, benefit to their employees. This element is called the Cadillac tax. <coughs> and unless we can find a way to lower the cost, to lower the employer cost for our medical insurance, we will be paying a half a million dollars in a tax, which we get nothing for, in 2018. In 2027, if we take an escalator of about 10% cost rising a year, we could be paying over $7,600,000 in a tax. Um, staff believes that the best way to reduce our cost is by creating and, uh, and totally revamping our wellness program with a program that incentivizes our employees to better manage their health as well as better manage their medical plan. Our current program has just one employee dedicated to benefits. You all know her, uh, Maria Boggs. One of the new positions that we are looking at is to assist Maria um, so that she can put more of her activities on uh, strategic planning and program development so that we can still have a good benefit package but not be re responsible for the Cadillac tax. The other position that we are asking for is uh, a human, this is, is the senior position, and that will help do our work in the community outreach, building our training program, working with the unions, and many other uh, HR functions. That position will also help with uh, some changes that we would like to make in our workers' compensation program, since that's one of the other areas where we see our costs rising. So. Other than a little, the money in workers' comp and the two new positions that we are asking for, that's our total ask for the HR department. And I gave you a nice little picture here of some penguins who are having a, a great little debate. <laughs> <laughs> Any no. questions? Not nothing to address now, but I'd like to know at some point more about the Cadillac tax. I not familiar with that at all and that's pretty okay. scary we have every intention saying. of doing a briefing for okay. uh, the, the uh, committee of the whole uh, we just got our numbers back about three weeks ago from our actuary on what that's going to cost us so you will be seeing us on your agenda great thank, thank you, you. Okay. <coughs> thank you Greg yeah. well Greg's coming up the, just briefly the Cadillac tax was a part of the Affordable Care Act and it was the way in which the uh, new enrollees for the Affordable Care Act are to be funded. Um, there are uh, lots of changes I'm sure that are still going to be um, made prior to the time that it becomes effective in 2018. <clears throat> and so we will, we are starting early to work on that um, uh, and we'll be back to uh, you as uh, during the year as we work with the unions to come up with some ideas. But we'll definitely have a briefing uh, first part of next year just to give you a, an idea of what it is that we're looking at and, and uh, some ideas about how we move forward okay Greg hey Greg's a speed demon <laughs> I go through this go. fast um, good evening president person and members of the council I'm Greg Zimmerman uh, Renton's uh, public works administrator and I'm here to talk to you today about the 2015 2016 public works department part portion of the budget um, in your budget books, that part is covered mostly between pages, or starting with page 3-109. Periodically, as I go through the presentation, I'll be letting you know the page number references that um, I'm referring to. This graphic uh, shows the organization. Uh, it doesn't have as much detail as some of the other graphics have, but it shows the organization of the department and the three divisions that the department is uh, made up of. The maintenance services division, which is directed by Mike Stenhouse, the transportation systems division, which is directed by Doug Jacobson, and the utility systems division, directed by Lise Hornsby, all three of whom are here today behind me and um, to correct me if I go astray. Um, I should also say that um, our net 
we have a, a few things that we will be we're asking for in this budget a few additions um, the net staffing change that we're requesting is one FTE we're actually proposing to add two FTEs and to reduce one FTE so that comes out to a net increase of one <coughs> Page 3-111 in your budget book shows that the Public Works Department total budget will be $104 million in 2015 and then $96.7 million in 2016. One of the things that you're all familiar with about the Public de um, Works Department budget is it fluctuates wildly year by year and it's not due to inflation or any of the normal causes. It's basically driven by the fact that our capital improvement program goes up and down quite a bit depending on how many grants we acquire and whether we're in a construction phase for a major project or we're in the design phase. So in this case, yes, the uh, 2016 budget's quite a bit smaller than the 2015 budget, but it's uh, basically because the difference in the amount of uh, dollar value of the capital projects we'll be building. If you look at the operating budget, it will be 74.1 million in 2015 and 74.5 million dollars in 2016 which is showing a much more expected type of uh, of pattern a uh, slight increase between the two years the proposed changes that i'm going to go through with you in a moment uh, will have some impacts on the services that we're providing there'll be improvements in area of snow removal surface water infrastructure maintenance particularly in the Benson Cascade neighborhood, compliance with the more rigorous National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, NPDES, I got it right that time, um, permit requirements that were required for our surface water, and uh, also increased mapping and record keeping for the water and the wastewater utilities. So those are the areas that we would like to uh, um, add some resources to. Public Works, like the other departments, also has a mission statement and core services. The Public Works Department manages and maintains Renton's utility and transportation systems in a skillful, professional, and caring manner so as to improve the lives of our residents and business customers. And the core services we provide, we develop, build, and maintain streets and sidewalks, develop and maintain water, wastewater, surface water, utility infrastructure, and we coordinate the collection of solid waste and operate the airport, a kind of traditional public works functions. I'd like to mention that it's not an accident that uh, in the mission statement, uh, the main mission is to improve the lives of our residents because that's what all of these services are ultimately for. If we're doing things in, a right, in the correct projects in the correct manner, we're improving people's quality of life and that's, we don't never wanna lose track of that, uh, that aspect. In addition to providing services, core services, in a professional and responsive manner, our goals in 2015 incorporate Mayor Law's four priorities to help Renton toward its goal of being the best city in King County. So I want to go over that um, to a certain uh, level of detail. The first uh, goal is to support the city's economic development priorities. I've got a couple of examples of what we'd be doing in these next two years in order to do that. Uh, you're familiar with the Main Avenue South Downtown Circulation Project, which will convert Main Avenue, a portion of Main Avenue, from a one-way street to a two-way street between uh, South Third and, and Mill Avenue. Um, this will help create a gateway for the downtown. It's consistent with the downtown plan, and it's one of the things that we're all going to be trying to do to um, make the downtown a destination. That's a very important goal. Um, we will also be doing transportation and surface water infrastructure projects, we currently are already, um, that will support the Sunset Highlands redevelopment project, which is obviously a crucial, very important development project in the Highlands. Um, serve our vulnerable and diverse populations is the second uh, goal. Um, we already put out multilingual information brochures about water conservation, about solid waste, about um, uh, quite a few um, elements of the work that we provide. 
and we're going to continue to look for opportunities to do that so that we can um, do as well as we can with communicating with our residents. Um, we will continue to the, the program of reduced utility rates for low-income seniors and disabled citizens. Like the rest of the city, we're involved in the inclusion and diversity training workshops that every employee will receive that training. And we're going to be continually looking for opportunities to make improved outreach with our um, diverse population and look at opportunities as they come up and try to capitalize on those opportunities. It's, it's one of our standing goals that we're going to be trying to improve in. Uh, enhance customer service and productivity. Continue emphasis in fast, responsible, effective service delivery and recognition, this is really important, of the employees that provide that um, high level of um, customer service. Uh, we make a big deal out of it and we'll always make a big deal out of it to recognize people that have gone above and beyond. Support the city's sustainable fiscal strategies. We've got several things that we're working on and we'll continue to work on. The fiscal policies for running the utilities have really helped us out in terms of holding utility rates and checks. That's the, one of the policies is that we don't bond, we don't do debt service for building utility projects unless we absolutely have to. We try to fund those through rates. And um, if you're not deep in debt, it helps you keep the utility rates down. Um, we're going to continue our aggressive attempts to acquire grants to build transportation and surface water projects. We've acquired more than $70 million of grants in the last six years. It's the only way you can build projects, and it's certainly a way to keep the concentrated expense from the projects out of the pockets of our Renton residents and spread it around, distribute it. And we uh, are going to move forward with converting the last 2,600 uh, street lights in the city that are owned by Puget Sound Energy into LED lights. We're working with Puget Sound Energy now to do that. Um, we figure the estimate is we'll save another $140,000 a year in reduced electrical costs when we do that. Like the other departments, Public Works emphasizes Renton results, which establishes service benchmarks, productivity goals, um, and performance measures. Renton results measures for the year 2013 and 2014 are shown in page 3-112 of your budget book. The Public Works Department, under the guidance of the Mayor and the City Council and the continued great collaboration we get from other departments, has had some important um, accomplishments in 2013 and 2014. I'll go through just a few of them. We completed the Rainier Avenue Improvement Project and completed the Southwest 27th uh, Strand or Boulevard extension, at least this particular phase of it. That will be an ongoing project. Um, we're proceeding with design of the Washington Advanced Manufacturing Training Institute, which you know, as you know, is a facility that will be located at the Renton Airport, funded by the state, um, and which will train aerospace workers. Uh, that project is continuing to move forward. We worked with King County to implement the Rapid Ride F-Line, which is all, you all know is a bus rapid transit service from Burien to the Renton Landing. We converted nearly 4,000 street lights into low energy LED lights in the city that is saving $250,000 in energy costs a year. We're not seeing that entire savings because 200,000 of that we have to use to pay off the 15 year loan that we took out, low interest loan. Once that loan's paid off, it's even a bigger dividend than the $50,000 a year or so that we're saving already above and beyond the loan payments. So it's been a great program. We completed construction of key utility infrastructure, including replacing some lift station, sewer lift stations that had outlived their useful life. And as you know, we're embarking on a program to change all the 17,500 water, uh, water meters in the city into electronic water meters. We've com uh, completed 14,000 of those conversions already. So we're getting pretty close to the finish line. And it really has created quite a bit of dividends. Uh, IT has put together a program where um, 
residents can look online and see what their uh, uh, what their uh, water consumption is. It's been a nice service for them. In addition, we found 1,800 leaks in people's water lines, and, and a lot of people are really happy to get that information because they can go and repair the water leak and save quite a bit of money. And it's great for water conservation too. It's been a good program. The next three slides that I'm going to go through highlight the changes that we're um, proposing for the 2015 and 2016 budget. Um, first, the first change is a one-time expense for $34,000. We'd be purchasing an 11-foot snowplow and a sander. We have a dump truck available. This would be our 11th snowplow sander assembly that we have at the shops. Uh, we already have a dump truck available to mount it, so it's just the um, sander and the snow plow. And the benefit of doing this is we have two smaller snow plows that we would be able to dispatch much more quickly to the residential streets if we had this additional sander for the to keep up with uh, snow accumulation on the arterials. So it would uh, result in quicker response in the residential neighborhoods. The um, surface water. NPDES increase, I'm not going to try to get the words right on that, um, again, because I did it once, um, to permit fees and office, op or um, the surface water NPDES <coughs> increase to permit fees and office operating supplies. This is a pass-through cost. The Department of, Igno of Ecology um, runs the program. Each city that uh, has a discharge permit, like Renton does, has to pay the fee. The fee's gone up, so um, $38,000 in 2015, 44000 in 2016. It wasn't unexpected, and the surface water utility rates will pay for that. Uh, the water conservation program um, is a $138,000 a year cost. This is not new. This particular item is a bookkeeping item. We used to charge this to the Water Capital Improvement Program, and we thought a more legitimate um, place to charge it was to the water operating budget, because it really wasn't the capital improvement cost. So that's just changing it to a different account. That money is spent to be a partic participant in Seattle Public Utilities Conservation Program. It pays for uh, rebates for low water use um, um, equipment and um, um, uh, washing machines and that type of thing. The uh, surface water utility um, has, has discovered an increased need for supplies and materials and pipes for infrastructure, particularly in maintaining uh, infrastructure that we inherited from King County in the Benson Cascade <coughs> uh, annexation area, particularly near Cascade Park. We found some infrastructure that was very deteriorated and in bad condition, and we're spending a lot of um, we're using a, a lot of uh, materials to try to work on those problems, and we decided we really needed to boost our uh, supplies account in order to take, take care of that at the level we want to. So a $40,000 a year boost to the supply account will enable us to pay for some of those problems we're finding in the utility infrastructure, the surface water infrastructure, and that again comes out of the surface water rates. Um, by the way, that um, that particular expense can be seen on page 632, supplies of the budget book, and the snowplow that I mentioned at first is on page 3-130 of the budget book. I'm forgetting to give you the page numbers, I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember to do that. Um, The surface water utility, these are the two new employees that I mentioned, the two new staff members. Um, <coughs> And they're both in the utility, so they'll be paid for ut by utility rates, not by general fund. Uh, the surface water, the first one, is a civil engineering one NPDES program uh, engineer. It will be a one FTE full-time position. It's shown on pages 3-113 and pages 6-32 of the budget book. Uh, the first year, in 2015, the budget would be $121,000 for that, and then it would continue to escalate by the COLA. Uh, in succeeding years. Um, we need that to provide adequate staffing for increased responsibilities that the phase two permit that we're going to be under will require us. We have uh, more rigorous and stringent inspection requirements. We have to respond um, to illicit discharges and um, illicit connections um, at a higher level. 
um, public education, more public education, and we're going to require, be required to do some management plan updates. So the revised phase two per permit puts some additional responsibilities on us, and uh, we feel we've come to the point where we'll need that an, an additional person to take care of those uh, building responsibilities. I do need to say one thing. A lot of times people think unfunded mandate, you know, that we've got these permits and we have to in increase staff in order to take care of the responsibilities. Even though the cause is good, it's for clean water. But I actually balance that with the fact that the state has made available quite a bit, quite a few more surface water grants, and we're using those grants to pay for major important pro projects like the Harrington Avenue project um, um, that, that is supporting the Sunset Highlands redevelopment. We're getting millions of dollars worth of grants. So actually, I don't consider it an unfunded mandate if you look at it from that, that, and from that point of view. The second position is Water and Wastewater Engineer Engineering Specialist 3. This would be a position that would be funded by both the water utility and the wastewater utility. That the position we're falling behind in our geographical information system responsibilities, which is populating the core maps as we continue to expand the utilities, hydraulic modeling of our pipelines to determine what our capacity needs are. We've got a new closed circuit TV system for our television camera for the sewer system that has electronic data that needs that will be very useful to us in our um, maintenance management. Um, so we feel that we need to um, actually have one FTE working for each of the utilities rather than both of the utilities splitting one FTE. So that's what that position would do. The position I mentioned um, that we would be reducing from the budget is the um, principal financial analyst position. It's a one FTE position that reports directly to the administrator. Traditionally what that position has done is worked on utility rate uh, scenarios and um, 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 done some um, quite a bit of processing different types of fees and so forth. Um, we lived without that position over the last year while finance and information services provided, backfilled, provided those services. And we found out it was successful. They were doing a great job. There wasn't a hiccup. Um, we were, um, all of our needs were being taken care of. So we came to the conclusion that we didn't need to fill that position. So the position's been in the budget. It wasn't filled last year. And this year we're saying, let's remove it from the budget. Um, Another um, item is, as you know, part of our commuter trip reduction program in transportation is to pay for ORCA cards for our city employees that use um, public transit. Uh, it's a program that's gotten significantly more expensive over the years. Metro provides the ORCA cards. And uh, in order to cover, continue to cover that program, it's going to cost an additional 110000 in 2015 and 130000 in 2016. So that funding has been proposed to be placed into the commuter trip reduction budget in order to pay for that. Um, and then the last item is a transfer of um, $100,000 from the city's insurance fund to the uh, transportation division budget in order to pay for guardrail repairs. This, this one also is more of a bookkeeping issue. The insurance fund currently pays for it. It was decided it would be simpler and more streamlined to just take that money that from the insurance fund, put it into the transportation fund, and let that be directly accessed when there's claims and when there's uh, guardrails that have to be replaced. So it's, it's just shifting money around. The next five slides are about um, um, our capital improvement program. I'm not going to be going through the individual projects because f by and large, most of the projects have been presented in earlier budget cycles. Um, the transportation improvement projects are all out of the TIP, uh, the six-year TIP that was uh, considered and adopted in the summer. And the utility projects, most of them are projects that were identified in the projected projects in the budget books in the past. So very few of the projects we're doing are brand new. It's just that we're finally getting to them as the years advance. So I won't go through the individual projects. I'd be happy to answer any questions any of you might have on the projects. And I did hand out um, some utility maps to show where these projects are located. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, the um, 
first slide here is for surface water CIP project. The, C, the Keppel Improvement Project for surface water will be $5 million in 2015 and $3 million in 2016. The whole um, group of projects in the uh, Surface Water Capital Improvement Program are described in the budget book between page 5151 and page 5177. So you have the list there and each individual project is described and they are shown on the utility maps as well. The next slide covers the Wastewater Utility Capital Improvement Program. Uh, the CIP budget for the wastewater utility for the capital improvements is $4.1 million in 2015, $3.55 million in 2016. All the information about the projects can be found in the budget book between pages 5-133 through 5-147. So the projects are described there and how much they cost and so forth. And if there are any questions, I'd be happy to provide information now or at a later date. The next slide is for the Water Utility Capital Improvement Program, which is, has a budget of $5.44 million in 2015, $6.19 million in 2016. Once again, all this information is in the budget book between pages 5-117 and 5-131. Lists all the projects and adds up and, and has that information about the budget for the projects. The uh, transportation improvement system, um, um, the 2015-2016 um, project list represents the project that uh, you reviewed as we were going through the six-year TIP plan. The only newcomer, as you know, is the Main Avenue South downtown recirculation project, the conversion of Main Avenue to a two-way street. That's new, um, but we have also discussed that particular project. Um, the budget for that is for, for the whole program is $14.3 million in 2015 and $6.6 .6 million in 2016. Again, it's in the budget book between pages 5-61 and 5-95, the individual projects and their costs are laid out. And last, but certainly not least, is the capital improvement program for the Renton Municipal Airport. Um, the uh, airport capital in investment budget is, our investment budget is $540,000 in 2015. We're having a kind of low expenditure year in 2015, and then back up to $2 million in 2016. Um, this does not include the Washington Advanced Manufacturer Training Institute. Um, that's a separate that's a sem separate um, budget element. Of course, that's a much more expensive project. The airport capital Im investment program can also be found in the capital improvement portion of the budget book between <coughs> pages 5-97 and 5-107. So, like as I said, um, that was a fairly quick run through the capital program, but um, it's very few new projects in there. It's projects we've been talking about for years and have been in the budget book. Um, I've got some statistics that I want to go through really quickly. Obviously, as we move forward in time, we have more street lane miles, both because of annexations and also because of development projects and new streets being built. We had 266 miles in the 2013-14 budget. We're up to 294 center line miles now. So we've added 28 miles to our street inventory. There's 10,500 signs in the city, uh, traffic signs. It's not including advertisements. Um, 4,100 city street lights, 129 signalized intersections. And this is a new stat we haven't uh, pointed to before, 7.95 miles of alleys. The airport is 168 acres, and um, we have 264 planes based at the airport, five of which are, are jets. Uh, the total landing and takeoffs are 98,800, roughly, and the number of Boeing 737 aircraft that were delivered in 2013 were 440. Obviously, that's a number that's trending upward.
just a few stats for the water. Um, we have around 17,500 customers roughly in water and wastewater. The, the customer count jumps up significantly for surface water, and that's because when we annex areas, we take over the surface water uh, service. But um, in, for the water and wastewater, the services continue to be uh, handled by the franchise holders, um, which is the Sioux Creek Water and Sewer District uh, and um, um, Water District 90 and so forth. So as you know, as you annex into an area that's provided uh, water and sewer service by another district, they retain the service. So that's why the surface water counts have gone up and um, the water and sewer have stayed relatively stable for the last few years. Um, we used 2.2 billion gallons of water in um, last year, 2013. So if you're ever wondering what, two, what a billion looks like, we used 2.2 billion of water consumption, so quite a bit. And 3,670 fire hydrants throughout the city. This is um, uh, a, a frame that I'm pretty happy with the results here. Um, there will be no Renton water rate increases, no Renton wastewater rate increases, and no Renton solid waste garbage rate increases in 2015 and 2016. That's the fruition of those financial policies I was talking about. They're really bearing fruit. We're able to build our projects and hold the costs down. There will be a 4% surface water rate increase both in 2015 and 2016. Um, and that again is mainly to keep up with the NPDES permit requirements, which are expanding requirements. It's been a fairly expensive permit to, to staff. Um, we've also proposed some increases in the special connection charges, which is the, those are the charges that uh, developers uh, need to pay to tie into city water, sewer, and stormwater systems so they can serve new developments. Those charges have gone up. Um, uh, the, the, the chart shows you how much they've gone up. We're still well under the average that most of our surrounding jurisdictions charge for those connection charges, um, but periodically you have to adjust the charge so you're collecting uh, um, the right amount of money to, according to the formula that, we've, that we use for that. Okay, I'm coming to my last two slides here. Um, we've given a lot of thought to service sustainability issues, both from the standpoint of continuing to operate um, optimal services, provide optimal services, with the structural um, financial challenges we have, um, and also Mayor Law's initiative to make Renton the best city in King County. So the service sustainability items that we're focusing on are meant to um, satisfy both of those considerations, living within our means and also the, uh, the four goals of um, the best city in King County effort. Um, so I'll just go through these real quickly. Maintaining higher quality staff and emphasize training, that's always important. Uh, promote public safety and reduce future costs by properly maintaining city infrastructure. I think most of you are aware, especially those of you that have spent time on the Transportation Aviation Committee, that infrastructure goes through a certain breakover point that if you don't maintain things, it gets way more expensive because you have to replace them. We don't want to allow that to happen. Um, continuing education programs for recycling, um, protecting the environment by building projects that enhance habitat, build infrastructure that supports economic development, and I gave you a couple examples that we're doing uh, of which projects that we're, we're supporting. Continue to preserve city funding by pursuing and securing grant funding that promotes goals of our capital improvement programs. Emphasize and recognize superior and responsive customer service. Practice financial policies that minimize utility rate increases. And continue to conserve energy and reduce costs by converting the remainder of our street lights to LED street lights. So, I've reached the question point. Any questions? Well done. Thank you. <laughs> That's the fastest I've ever heard well you talk. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, you know, and, and like Greg has said several times, these issues have all been vetted through the council, through different committees, and then brought back through committee reports to the, mm -hmm. to the full council. So this is not like new information to the council. And 
I think overall I'd like to congratulate everybody on their presentations mm -hmm. and, and the preparation of this budget. Uh, we're sustaining what we, we do with a minimum increase of uh, employees and they're only getting additional employees where they <coughs> where they really have been justified and, and that they are needed. We have a lot of other things we'd love to do that would really be nice to do, but what we are doing what we are providing with this budget is good service to our community, quality service and uh, and being <coughs> responsive. So with that, before the committee of the whole is adjourned, I have passed out to you a uh, suggested committee report. If you want to take a look at that, and if you have any problems with it, let me know. Otherwise, I intend to uh, read this report out this evening. <coughs> with that, the committee of the whole is adjourned. Coming up in the landfill is still recyclable, and two,